All right, welcome to part two of the M5 OD R2 transmission assembly. In the last video, we went through the tools and some idea of the basic operation. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the transmission housing, and we'll talk about the shifting fork system. So this is the housing that's a part for the uh, Triton V8 engines in Ford F-150s and you can see it's quite empty. You can see the top hole which is for the main shaft and the bottom hole which is for the counter shaft. This is the tail end, this is the output end, and there's that bump to the your right side of your screen is for the reverse idler gear that we talked about a little bit ago too. And uh, yeah, there's a plate for the mid, some sort of mid plate. There's probably a better name for it than that. This is the shifting system. These are the shifting forks right here. Uh, you hear about people telling you to keep your hands off the shifter. We're going to carry this over by the other parts. You hear about people take, telling you to keep your hands off the shifter while driving, and I'll show you why that is. From the previous video, remember this is always spinning. <clears throat> These, when you, sh when you uh, wobble your gear selector lever, this is the gear selector lever. This comes up through the floor of the vehicle and up into the truck in front of the seat between the seat and the dashboard. If you don't know where the gear selector is, I think you have some other videos to watch. As you, and I'm not going to do it here, but as you wiggle that left and right and forward and back, uh, left and right will engage this one, this one, or the reverse fifth, uh, fifth gear selector, which is this one, and forward or back will shift, will slide these things forward or back, and they have detents in them, so they kind of click, and I don't think I'm going to get them to move because they're hard to do without a big long lever on them. This point right here is what sits on top of these shifting dogs and you'll notice that they line up perfectly to fit uh, right over here. There you go. So you'll notice that you could uh, why weren't human <clears throat> why weren't humans born with three hands you know I mean obviously YouTube humans should be born with three three hands so if you were constantly leaning on the shift lever putting some force forward or back on this it would rub that shiny metal which is essentially this shiny metal right here it would rub that shiny metal against this shiny metal which is one of these forks, it sits right in here, and it will wear that out. Will it happen right away? No. Should you never touch that? That's eh, probably fine. But if you're one of those people who drives down the road at 70 miles an hour for four hours on the way from Nashville to, I don't know where you're going, but somewhere, uh, that will start to wear. This one's, this one's cast iron. This is the fifth in reverse. These are not. These are aluminium, and they do wear out quite fast, and the shop manual gives you some wear limits on those. Uh, another thing we'll talk about briefly for uh, M5OD tr transmissions, three rubber, rubber plugs up here. They're from the bore lines used to bore those for those three rods. You can see this end and this end. This end is capped with um, Welch plugs that where you dimple the front. This one is not. This one from the factory is a rubber plug. The number one failure in this transmission is it heats up, blows a plug out, or blows all three plugs out, starts sucking in debris, and destroys the transmission. Almost certainly what happened to my lovely model over here. You can go right onto eBay, and you can find uh, Welch plugs that go in the other side of those three. So this one's already been redone. And there's also a, a kit up here because this... There's a ball retainer up here that breaks. You take off these three screws. You can do that from inside the cab. If the shifter's all loose and funky, you have to replace the ball and two pins that are underneath this plate. I won't show it to you. There's lots on how to do that already on the internet. It is the number one failure mode for this transmission. So I promised that we would start putting some stuff together and put some stuff together. We will. Uh, the reassembly of this is going to show us a lot. So I'm going to start by putting in this counter shaft and this uh, input shaft in here. And through the magic of pause, the uh, counter shaft is now in. 
and now I'm putting in the input shaft. And notice the, the tapered roller bearing is already on it. Also notice there's a flat spot up here on this, uh, the part that's driven by the uh, shifting dogs. Got the bearing in here, which is important. You can just don't forget it. Uh, you can put it in now or you can put it in when, the, when you put it in the other half. It's going to sit at that funky angle like that. And now I've put in the output side of the main shaft, but it's not all the way in. And you're going to swear that it's not going to fit. But if you see this curve right here, it must be there because that's the only way that pin right there, that uh, end of the shaft bearing journal, whatever it's called, will fit into there. So it will fit. It just takes gentle and careful finagling. This thing's fairly heavy. I'd probably put it at uh, 15 kilos or so. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, it's got some weight to it. All right, next, I'm gonna, I need to absolutely make sure I put that brass synchronizing ring in here. It's worn out, by the way, but I'm going to put it in anyway because I'm showing you how to put it together. So there's the brass synchro ring, and you'll notice that it has um, three cutouts around the perimeter of it. And those three cutouts match with, did you see that three cutouts? And those three cutouts must match with the uh, spring-loaded pieces in here that keep the shift dog where it's supposed to be. You'll know right away when you get them right, you just don't want to get them wrong. I don't know if that would fit together if you get them wrong, but um, it'll, this will sit in here. There it is. So this that will fit right against there, and it'll only rotate a little bit without it. So now that I got that together, I'm going to use both hands. I'm going to put lift the uh, input shaft and output shaft, get them lined up. I may have to slide the counter shaft way down below. It's down there. Uh, you're not going to probably see it from this video, this uh, lighting. But it, there you can see a little bit of that gear right in there. It's down there. You may have to slide that back or forth to get, because this outer flange right here has to fit that side of the uh, counter shaft because there's a gear on the other side of it. All right, hold on. All right, there they are together. <clears throat> Just so you know, I was paused for probably 30 seconds while I lifted the left half and the right half and kind of tilted them together and got them to come together. Uh, I did have to fiddle with that uh, counter shaft gear down there. The roller element bearing is sitting up here pressing right against the aluminum uh, transmission case. The roller element here is doing the same. <clears throat> there's no bearing or race down there and there's no bearing or race down there and that's absolutely required that you don't put those in yet. Those will happen next. So now I'm going to put in <clears throat> the, uh, the those um, roller element bearings that I showed you before that are all worn out. I'm going to put both of those in. So here's the one and the other one is floating around here somewhere. I was talking about it. There it is. Nope. I'm going to make you wait and walk and look. Ah, there it is. See, I made you wait while I go through and find these two. So the small one will go on the back end and the big one will go on the front end. So in just a second, you'll see those on. Now the way to do this is to put in both of these bearings on the output end first and then flip the transmission up. Pardon me, you're going to get a black screen for a moment. It's probably like cardinal sin in videography, but I'm not a videographer. So the way to do this is to tip this up, get these two bearing races in, and then this plate right here goes over them and there's an arrow and the first thing is you need to see the arrow the second thing is the arrow goes up counter shaft main shaft that'll go over the top you'll drive those in and then flip the transmission upside down which is why there are these two 2 by 4s so the shaft can fit through let me go ahead and put that put that plate on top of those two there's no shimming on this back side we're gonna have to shim the front okay so now that back plate is in there and six screws torqued down. The bearing is in the bottom. Bearing race is in the top. The, the uh, roller element bearing is still poking out because this shaft is out this way. You can see this, roll, this uh, tapered roller bearing is facing out this way. The front is not supported yet, only the back. So 
the uh, counter shaft is not going to rotate real well, but it does rotate some. You can see I'm rotating the counter shaft and it's rotating the top gears. Next, I'm going to lift the bell end up so the uh, output end faces down through these slots in 2x4s. I didn't mention earlier, there is a ball, there are two little single ball bearing balls on the other end that you have to watch out for when you take apart your transmission. Don't lose those balls. I think the kits do come with some, but you know the routine. What if they don't? And then you're stuck without, then you're ballless. So you don't want to be ballless. I'm currently getting the um, outer race for this end. That's going to go in here. And I've got the, now you notice that's all nicely lined up, no big deal. So I can now pop in that bearing and it goes in that easily. This one would go in easily, but it's got some uh, silicone goo on it. So we'll give it a little tappy tappy. I do not uh, try to uh, say I've got a trademark on any of these little phrases. Yes, I am a fan of the Saskatoon YouTuber Ave. All right. Yeah. So this this race right here will go down uh, not all the way, but you need to get it. You need to get that backside torqued in. And you need to, get, need to get this tap down, and I, I'm going to do a little trick here to show a little more detail somehow. I'm going to put my finger on one side, and I'm going to tap on that side lightly. I'm going to rotate this a little, then I'll put my finger on this side, tap on that side, and vice versa a couple times, because we need to measure the height from this surface to this surface. And then we'll also need to measure the corresponding height. This is the cap that's going to go over that, and without all this stuff in it, without this oil seal and stuff in here i'll show you in a minute we need to measure that height and then we need to pick shims that are the exact right we need uh 0 0.05 millimeters of end play on there and if you don't get that right i'm going to tell you right now the transmission is going to be noisy and it is going to be awful and if you've already taken your transmission out you're going to know that taking one out and putting it in is not so fun so take the extra time this is a pro tip from your uncle fred here take the extra time Get that right. Get your clearances right. You got to do the same thing on this one. You got to measure this clearance also, and pick the right shim. Uh, the shims are available from places like Allstate Gear. I think it's called. I don't know. You can find them online. So uh, measure those. Measure this height. Measure that depth. Subtract the two. And as I say, you're going to end up with you're, you want a 0 0.05 millimeters of clearance in there. And this one, I think you get 0 0.05 to 0 0.15 of clearance is your allowance on this one. This one is not so radial impo radially important, but um, yeah. And then you've got to get a shim kit. Here's a shim kit right here, M5R2 shim kit. So these are each one thick, thinner, thinner, thinner. And then this is the only one I have, and it happens to be right for this side. So uh, because this is a demo only I'm not going to do all that um, I showed you I told you how to do it and if telling you isn't good enough I don't know I'm a parent so if telling you isn't good enough what good am I uh, all right I will clean this off a little bit so it goes back together I'm fast losing my daylight R's here so uh, uh, we're gonna have to kind of rush it uh, you will want a new seal in there and you will want to put permasex all the way around there and you will want to torque that in the proper boop bop beep boop bop beep bop beep bop beep bop beep bop beep uh, star pattern whatever all right so now those bearings are in Ooh, listen to that it's all gear like she's getting heavy too all right so there's the output hey wait a minute no gears are turning what the hell did I do wrong? Oh, it's in neutral. Let's put it in gear. Oh, look, it's turning. One to one. So let's put it back in neutral. Let's put it in first gear. All right, let's see what we got here. Mmm, that's nice. Looky, looky, huh? 
I'm turning way faster on the input than the output's going. All right, back in neutral, enough play. So really, that's done. Oh crap, there's one thing. Fortunately, we can do it now, but there's one thing I didn't do. There's an oil slinger. Hello, slinger. The oil slinger thingy, you gonna puke yet? The oil slinger thingy I think can still go in here. Yeah, there's that cup thing. That's going to take lubricant, lubrican. I want to. I'm um, believe the word should be lubrican because when you have lubricant, anything's possible. That's going to take lubrican as it swings up over here, catch it, funnel it, and shoot it through a little hole and over to the side and wash out that bearing. How cool is that? All right. So we've got everything up front here done. This whole back end here is the only thing left. So. Whoosh, Gravité is going to be defeated while I lift this and point it to the sky. Whoa, it's like a roller coaster. Here we are looking at the R end of her. And uh, she looks awfully lonely and empty inside there. I think we better start filling it up. Prepare for some puke. I'm going to walk around. All right, first things first. I got to remember what goes in here. Um, <laughs> not that. Uh, this guy goes in first. This big ass gear here. This is the one that brings the power out for its fifth gear and stuff. Nope, that goes in later. <laughs> uh, I should probably look at the manual for this. See, all this stuff was nicely stacked up. Um, these go in first. All right, so this gear goes in. And he goes in like that. No particular ornamentation. He can be straight, bisexual, lesbian... Transgender, you name it, it's all fine. So he goes in first. Now we got to get a gear to mate with down there. <laughs> I said mate with. And uh, that one will also be splined. So that is going to be not that one. That one's going to go on top. Let's just leave the dang things over here. Uh, ah, yes. It's one of those that needs the ball bearing. And I just found the ball bearing. That's what reminded me to remind you to remind to get your ball bearing. Here it is. So this gears hub, so it doesn't spin, has a ball bearing drilled out area there. And the shaft, the counter shaft has somewhere around it a ball bearing hole. There it comes right around there. See it? So I'm gonna put the ball bearing into the ball bearing hole. And it will stay there. Do you know why it'll stay there? This is kind of interesting. It's going to stay there because I asked it to. That's the kind of control I have over matter. So there we go. I don't have it over anything else, but I definitely have it over matter. All right. <laughs> My family is not made of matter, apparently, because I do not have control over them. All right, so then there's this uh, gear is going to go in. This one, and don't ask me why, and I mean it, don't ask me why. If you ask me why... I'm just going to get mad. It comes with this split bearing. I don't know why. I don't know why. But two halves go in there nicely. And now look at that. Voila, as the French say. I'm not French, so I do not say voila. All right, so next, we're going to have to get the fifth gear stuff in there. All right, so here's some of the fifth gear stuff. And here is the... Uh, the synchronizers for that. These synchronizers are different for the fifth gear in reverse. One fits, one fits really well. So you've got to get the one that fits really well. On this side, you cannot put the wrong one on there. All right, that one stays there. This one, as I said, I'm going to kind of speed this up a bit. This one goes over here. It's going to sit on top. Yeah, did I get them right? Nope, I don't think so. Uh, let's get the other one over here. This goes on to that taper. It fits beautifully. You'll know right away if it doesn't fit, it, it wobbles. So make sure on that one, because otherwise you get a back up. And who the hell wants back up? This is the reverse and fifth gear shift fork assembly. It is going to sit down in that hole, right in the middle there, right there. And that black shift fork for fifth and reverse, this guy has to fit, has to slide into that uh, space right there that my finger is 
in. So I'm going to have to put the camera down, lift that, uh, that thing down there, that black lever, get it in there, get this over the top of that, and get the three cutouts lined up with the three things that they line up with. And this side is different than this side. That one protrudes higher, that one protrudes lower. Make sure you get that right. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not positive. I think this is backward right now. I think the, the tall end the tall end faces down, but I'll let you know as soon as I come back. I was correct, and if I wasn't correct, I'm correct now, so either way I'm correct. Uh, this is the short side of that hub, and it's got to go up at the top, and that groove must be exposed because for the sole purpose of this fancy retainer system that we're going to be putting in to hold all that crap down. Remember how I said these helical gears will exert a force? Well, this one's going to exert quite a force. So there are two half moon retainers. Here they are. One goes on one side and I'm gonna let you guess. I'm not gonna tell you where the other one goes on the other side. And then there's this washer that has a step in it and we're going to put that over the top. It's a thrust washer and it is also going to keep those retainers retained. So now that washer goes over the top, keeps those two retainers in a circle. And uh, that's basically it. I'm going to line them up so they're, the lines on the retainer are right along with the lines on the other gear because I think that's pretty. And somebody's probably going to say, you idiot, that's going to destroy the whole entire transmission and the whole thing is going to be whatever. And you know what? Good for them, I say. So now I'm getting those two roller sleeves that I found earlier that I mentioned. I'm going to drop one on the shaft, two on the shaft. Uh, don't forget your other synchro, which I dropped down here, the brass ring. So you got my safety shoes on. Uh, that one drops in here. And again, has to go in the proper way. I've got the bearings on there now. See my little bearings? I got this other output gear here. And with its conical thing, that's what lines up with the synchro. Now it's in there, and um, you say to yourself, well, right, but how does this gear here ever turn that gear? And well, that would be a good question, saving for that uh, it needs this gear in there. This one also has a big hub on one side and a shorter hub. Don't worry, I have my safety shoes on. See that? Hey, cut me some slack, man. It's hard to film, talk, and hold shit at the same time. So you just want to make sure those two gears are at the same level. The thicker part, the thicker extending hub goes down, the thinner extending hub goes up. They are at the same level, so everything's good. Um, now I'm going to get the reverse idler assembly. Oh, uh, don't forget this bolt is what holds in. We're almost done. 23 minutes. This bolt has to go in the outside here, and it holds in that reverse idler. And if you forget that, uh, the reverse shaft, and that's got, I'm not going to do that right now, but that's got to be put in, and there's a hole in that shaft right up here, and you got to get that in. So if you didn't get that in earlier, you got to grab it with a pliers or something gently and get that in. This one hangs out by this bolt, which you'll see some schmoo goo on here. That one needs Permasex on it, or it's going to leak like a, like a banshee. So there's the hole. It goes down into here like this, and 